Well, thank you for coming to our new features webinar. Uh, we're hoping that we can get you all up to speed before the sessions start again so that you're ready. Uh, so today we'll be going over. Um, oh, first, I guess. Hello, I'm Karen. <laughs> We've got Patsy here as well. Hello. And she will be offering color commentary as we <laughs> move through our slides. Um, but feel free to reach out to us with if you need any more information about anything we cover. All righty. So uh, start with an inspirational quote. And kudos to you for continuing your education, even if it's just your Bill Track 50 education, it still counts. Um, all right, so onwards. This is what we'll be covering today. I wanted to take just a minute to go over our winter updates, remind you of all the new committee stuff we've added, um, and then highlight our new help section so that if you need more information on any of these topics or any topics, you'll know where to go. And then we'll get into the meat of it, which is our new expanded search capability and our new roll-up bill sheet type, which I think you will really enjoy. It definitely expands your ability to search for bills, to put them all in one bill sheet, to share exactly what you want in the way you want. So hopefully you'll find that uh, to be pretty exciting. And then we'll take a quick peek into the future and talk about what we are currently working on so that you know what's coming up next. All right, so a very quick look at the winter updates. And usually we don't release that much over the winter, but Patsy, I think you'd have to agree, we did actually release a couple major things. I would. As the uh, new year got started. So the one that the most impactful, I think, is the new event schedule alert. So if you want to now, you can go to the alert tab and there is a new option to get a second email from us every day with a list of the events for the next week. So that's just a new email you can turn on. Like the bills, you'll only get one email a day and it'll be however many bill sheets you've asked us to put into your event email. Um, but there you go. You can get a little reminder of what the next seven days, seven rolling calendar days of uh, events hold for bill hearings. So that is available. You might wanna go in and turn those on if you like for next year, and then you'll be ready. Uh, second, we also put back the ability to put logos on your stakeholder pages and your scorecards. So that used to be something you could do. And then when we released the new belt track 50, it went away for a little while, but now it's back. And I wanted to make sure that you knew that in case you've got a scorecard or you've got a stakeholder page and you want to put a logo on it. Um, so I've got a little link to a video here which reminds me to tell you, we are going to be sharing these slides. You'll get a link to these slides um, after the presentation. So all of the links and all of the notes here you will get. So don't feel like you have to remember what we're telling you. You will, you will get these slides um, and it'll have all the videos and the other links in here when you get them. Um, all right, so Patsy, have you ever added a logo to anything? Uh, I've helped users add logos. It's pretty cool. It helps with their branding and usually their marketing and communications people appreciate it. <laughs> I like it. I think, yeah, exactly. Especially if you are having us host it. When you click on a link and it's a whole page, it's nice to have your logo still on it. Um, all right. So the user description and filter for user management. So I don't know how we overlooked that when we released the enterprise edition, but uh, it was requested and we added it and I find it very helpful. So now when you add a user, if you want to, you have an extra place where you can put a description of that user. So if you've got so many users, you're having trouble finding the people you're looking for, you now can have a description which might be their department or which state chapter they're with or whatever. And then now you can filter on that when you're looking for users, you can use a little magnifying glass at the top and I uh, use that to help find people. So that's just a convenience. Um, we've added another column that you can add to your bill sheets and to your regulation sheets called state link. So if you would like to include the link right to the state source, or of course, congress.gov if it's federal, uh, and you want that to be part of your stakeholder page or part of like when the map slides over, or if you just want it in your own sheet for your own reasons, you can now add that column there and it'll have just the links to either the bill or to where we got the regulation um, whenever that's possible, which is almost always. So 
that is a great column to have available. And Patsy, we just got requests for that all the time, right? So we just went ahead and yeah, I, that is a really commonly requested, and I think it helps um, when you're taking it, you know, into a stakeholder page or something you're sharing out. Um, other people uh, can have both the Build Track 50 link, obviously, but they can also have the state link. So it's yeah. it it just um, it's nice to pull it up to that level instead of having to jump into the bill itself or the regulation. It's just that much more credibility, you know, if you've got your official links in there. Absolutely. And then the checkbox, you might not have noticed copy comments is gone, but uh, it was, we were getting, it's just been confusing. So for the last 10 years, it's been confusing that if you didn't check the box before you added the bill, it didn't copy your comments. And that was a frustration. And we had imagined that people would mostly not want to copy their comments and we were wrong. So we changed the behavior. So now it's going to copy the comments with it. And if you don't want the comments, you're going to have to delete them on the new sheet. But by default, it's going to take the comments with you. And I think that's almost always what you're going to want. Um, so that's that's now just the default behavior. And the copy comments checkbox is gone. And you probably didn't even notice. But in case you did, uh, yeah, it's just going to copy your comments automatically now. So whenever you add a bill to another bill sheet, using the plus comments go to. Um, all right, so a little primer on the logo because that is the, the most interesting feature and the only one that's not obvious. So you manage logos now um, on your manage account menu. So when you go up to the menu and you pull down and say manage account, uh, you've got all your normal stuff and now there's a new logo thing at the bottom. And on that page, you know, it just has a normal upload your image like you'll have on you know any website anywhere um, and you can stick whatever all images you want in there uh, also you can go to that page to review how many different like i can see i've got two scorecards using this logo and one stakeholder page using this logo so that'll just remind you like which logos are in use in case you've got a variety like i do um, so once you've got those logos set up now anybody in your account will be able to stick them on their scorecard or stick them on their stakeholder pages so it allows everybody to be able to use it. And that's why it's like an account management thing because it's at the account level. Once the logos are available, everyone in the account can access them. And so the way you access them is you go to the manage tab of your stakeholder page or your scorecard and it has a little logo section and it's got a drop down. So you just drop it down, pick the logo you want, boom, it's there. And it shows up at the top of your stakeholder page or at the top of your scorecard. That's all there is to it. So you've got to load them up as the account manager, but once they're there, everybody can use them just by going to the manage tab of the thing they want the logo on. Uh, did I forget anything about logos, Patsy? That covers it, right? That covers it, yep. All right, moving on. So that was all the old stuff, the winter stuff. Uh, just in case you had missed those features, uh, they're good ones, so we wanted to make sure that you knew about them. We've also added a whole bunch of committee stuff and it kind of dripped out in pieces over the last many months. So I wanted to wrap it all up to remind you. Um, on your bill sheets, if you look at the query tab, you can now filter by committee. So that is an option that's there. Use it if you like. Um, you now can also uh, search for committees. So that is something we ask for all the time. Um, so now instead of having to find a legislator on that committee to be able to see who else is on that committee, you can now just go directly to that committee. So that's just in the quick search section of your navigation tab. So we have the bill quick search and the legislator quick search, and now there's a new committee quick search. Easy peasy. So you type in the name of the committee, hit search, and it'll show you all the committees that have whatever words you just typed in. So if you typed in education or health, it'll show you all of the related committees and you can pick the one you want to see. Um, and then we've got our brand new committee page, which is beautiful. So it shows the committee and the contact info for the committee itself, any subcommittees that there is, and any committee staff that we know about. So in some states, we've got quite a generous amount of committee staff info, which is pretty sweet. Here is what it looks like. So this is the committee page. Again, in the quick search section, bills, legislation, now committees. And then you got a little gallery of faces, right? I don't know. 
I like it. <laughs> uh, so then up here, we've got the contact info for the committee itself. And then if we have, if this committee has subcommittees, you'll have this tab, which will list them all. And then you can click on them and get the same display. And if we've got staff for that committee, you'll have a staff tab, which looks just like the staff tab for a legislator. Um, so now you've got all this extra information. And of course you can click on any of these people. So pretty sweet. And that was a short, uh, that, this is even shorter. Okay, and we have our new help options, which we have been working hard on, have we not, Patsy? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, so in the navigation bar now, we've got a little section at the bottom of the navigation bar that says getting started guide and FAQ and release notes. So you now have three places to go for information. So the getting started guide, we are trying to keep it with all the stuff that we are releasing. So it just walks you through all the basics, how to make a query, how to use a widget, how to set up a stakeholder page, and it links out to videos and links out to other blog posts and whatnot. But it's your basic table of contents for all of our help. Um, and then we've got our FAQ, which uh, you'll notice if you start using it is Patsy's projects, lots of Patsy videos. So if you're tired of watching me, now you can see Patsy. Um, so the FAQ has got our genuinely most frequently asked questions and links to videos and links to full blog posts with screenshots and everything along with a short, sweet answer in case all you needed was a hint. So the fact, great place to start if you're just wondering, how do I do the, you know, like what do bill numbers mean? Or uh, I don't know, what are some of the questions? A lot of the times it's, you know, hey, I have a new coworker, how do I add them? How do I share? Um, you know, the stuff like that. Um, also, oh, I know I can make a custom column, but where do I find my template thing again? <laughs> Stuff like that, where so like, is, you know that it's there, but oops, I forgot. Because <laughs> yeah. if you don't add new users all the time, then yeah, you, this is a good hint for stuff you know you can do, but you forgot and where to start. Um, and then we've got our release notes. So that's going to be as we put new stuff out, we'll keep the release notes updated with the latest things that we have released. So if you're curious, if some feature looks new, you can go there and see about it and it should link to additional information about what the feature does. Um, but that's our new help area. So hopefully that'll be everything you need to stay current and you know, to remind yourself how to use Bill Track 50 after you get rusty. Um, but of course, Patsy and I are both still here, both still wanna hear from you. So we'll still be checking on you and you can still schedule a time with us or give us a call, write us at any time. So please don't think we're trying to like, yeah, point you to a fact instead of to actual help. So if you get stuck, like we are here to help you and we want to. All right, uh, now into the meat of it. Very exciting. We are, we are roaring through this, are we not? <sighs> okay, expanded search capability. So now you can do a trickier search. And this is for, if you want to do, I want A or B and B or C or A and B or B and C. I'll show you in a second, but it lets you combine things in a way without having to do multiple bill sheets for it anymore. All right, so I'm gonna switch over to actual live demo here, um, but I've got a little video about how to do it here and a post about how to do it here. So when you get the slides, you can refresh your memory if anything does not uh, stick on what I'm about to show you. All right, so Bill Track 50. Um, again, quick search, Vinny's here, and here is our little help section at the bottom. All right, but this is my home screen, of course, and now I'm wanting to create a new query, um, but I've got something pretty complicated in mind. So I'm gonna go to bill sheets and I'm gonna say a new sheet. All right, and I'm gonna say a uh, tricky query. All right, so off we go. Now, um, I'm gonna go ahead and say I want everything, great. But if I'm searching, so now I have instead of my any of, all of, and none of, 
I actually can just start picking which boxes I actually do need and you can pick multiple boxes. So now you can have a bunch of boxes instead of just three. So I'm gonna say I need any of. All right, so that just gives me my old any of box. And so now I'm gonna say I want marijuana, um, but in some states, New York, Maryland, and so forth, they spell it with an H. That's always been a killer if you wanna do a marijuana search because it could be that. And I'm gonna go ahead and say some sort of cannabis situation too. So any of those words, great. But now I'm, what I'm interested in is uh, if they are doing expungement, but sometimes that's called expunction. So again, I've got two words. And so I didn't used to be able to do another any of box, but now when I say add another condition, I can say, I want another any of box. Thank the maker. We can now do this all in one place. So now I can say expunge and a star and expunct and a star to get expungen, expungement or expunging or, you know, and then expunction so that I can look for both of them at the same time and matching any one of these words. So now I'm really doing six searches. I'm doing marijuana and expungement or marijuana and expunction or marijuana and expungement and marijuana and expunction or cannabis and expunction. So you see how that like gets to be a bunch of searches pretty quick, um, but it's easy to look at, it's easy to understand. And now I can even add an additional thing if maybe I'm not interested when it's uh, appropriations. That's not what I want, I just want new laws. Um, okay, so there's my query. Now if I save it, it's gonna do all of those different searches that we just talked about and give me my results. So that's the new expanded search capability. So you, for your existing queries, when you go to the query, you probably won't even notice that it's different. If I didn't have a none of box, then when you come and look here, you're only gonna have two things instead of three. Um, so, but whatever you had will be filled in like it was. So all of your existing bill sheets are gonna run exactly like they were. But if you've created any bill sheets where you actually did do all of those words plus expungement and then all of those words plus expunction, now you can bring them together in one query if you want to, um, which lets you then you know, do your filtering all in one place, lets you, you know, remove these things all in one place. Uh, so you've got it all together. So that's a new powerful way you can also now do, which you couldn't do before, um, let's say I want a near query. So I want arts near education. Um, but then I also want another near. I didn't used to be able to do that. But now I can say, give me another near and say, I don't know, arts next to funding or something like that. And so now I can do, you know, line up some nears and then also say, plus it's got to have all of appropriations. Um, so now I've got my new query with, it's got to have this and this near this uh, or this near this, right? So that is a different kind of way you could take advantage of this, of having multiple boxes to create trickier queries. Um, Patsy, do you have a good example that you have created that you're proud of? No, um, not handy, but sorry. <laughs> um, I was working with a user uh, last week um, and she was just excited because she had had a lot of different sheets. And so we were able to kind of um, make some connections between issues and uh, make her management a little bit easier um, and be able to filter and report and alert off of uh, a single sheet instead of having to uh, look across a couple. So, yes, it's, I think it's a winner. So if you need any help taking advantage of this, if you've got something you've been trying to write and you can't quite crack it, we're both very excited to help you use your yes. new additional boxes to make it happen. So, all right, so that is the new expanded search capability.
And by expanded, we mean you could have multiple boxes of the same kind of thing. Um, and you can wind up with quite a number of boxes here. There is a limit as you go through, like I've used two nears. Now I don't have another near available to me, so I can't pick that from the list. So it will run out of items. You can't have an infinite number of boxes, but you can have um, quite a bit of stuff before it starts running out. Um, all right, so that is an expanded query. But speaking of bringing these together into one bill sheet, we also have a new way to do that. Uh, so we've got what we are calling a roll-up sheet. So I'm gonna go back to the bill sheet tab and I'm gonna say new sheet and let's make a new roll-up roll up. And now I'm going to say type, instead of a query, I want to make a roll up. So this is going to be a different kind of bill sheet. I'm going to say create. And now instead of a query tab, I have a roll up tab. And I'm going to go back to the presentation to give you a couple of roll up tips before we actually try one. All right, so that was the expanded search. Now the roll up. So when you make it a roll-up type, like we just did, then on that roll-up tab, you've got the three things to pick, which we just glanced at. The first is bill sheets. So you're deciding which bill sheets you want to include. I'll show you what that looks like in a second, um, but there's some limits. So just like all bill sheets, you can have up to 5,000 bills on it. And if you go past that, we're just taking the first 5,000 and that's what you'll get. Um, and I think it's by a most recent action. So it'll just pull the most 5,000 things that it has and they happen most recently. And then you could have up to 52 sheets all rolled together into one. And the choice of 52 is obvious. Why 52, Patsy? Because when you have your state options, you have 52 to select from. So you can have one of each. That's it. So you can have one of each. Yes. All right. Uh, and we had to keep some kind of limit because otherwise it could go uh, quite out of <laughs> if somebody is crazy and then that slows the system down for everyone. Uh, all right, and then you have to choose what kind of roll up you want. And so normally what you're gonna want is a union. You're gonna want all the bills from all of the sheets that you have picked. And so if you remember your old Venn diagrams, that's a union. All right, great. But you could also potentially just wanna know what bills are on all of those sheets so that you could figure out what are your priority bills. So if you've got three different searches that are covering similar topics um, and you're curious, like you've got some environmental stuff you're searching and you're curious what bills are actually on all of those sheets so that you can say, those are my priority bills and those are the ones that I'm gonna hit first, then you can actually just make a real quick roll up, choose the intersection option and say, I just want the bills that are on all of those sheets and we'll show you what bills are on all of those sheets. So you can use that to make quite a tricky query. So you can create like a PFAS and then something about like banning stuff and then see where they overlap. Um, or you could say, actually, I've just got, you know, here's my, my stuff I care about. And I just, my priority bills are gonna be the ones that are on all of the sheets. And then we'll show you that. Um, so you can use the intersection creatively uh, to give yourself a heads up about what is the most important stuff. All right, so that is the roll up type. And then the copy data, it's just a checkbox, but you, we need to know if you would like your custom columns, so all your comments and your positions and all of that to get copied onto the roll up. And if you would, great. Then if a bill is on more than one sheet, we will take the data from the first sheet the bill is on alphabetically. Um, so you can put the sheets in order, by putting numbers in front or letters in front to get them in the order you want, um, but so that you can be in control of which data we take. But we've got to take the data from one of the bills. And so that's how we figure out which one to take. Just alphabetically, we take it from the first bill. So if a bill is on three different sheets, presumably you support it on all three, but if you've not supported it on all three, we're gonna take whatever it is that you did with it on the first sheet. Um, okay, so how that looks in practice. Pull this back over. All right, so as advertised, you get to pick which bill sheets. And so the way we've done that is just a multi-select. So I can say, all right, I'm wanting my barbecue bills. Uh, I'm interested in economic nexus. 
and I want that new tricky query I just did and uh, some GML. All right, so like just just a complete crazy selection of bills. Um, and I'm going to say I want bills that aren't any sheet. So that's the default. That's usually what you're going to want to use. But you can also do the intersection. So you can say bills that are on all of the sheets. And again, that'll just give you bills that appear on every single one of those. I'd be surprised if there are any, but who knows? Uh, all right, and then this is the copy user data. Do I want to bring my positions and whatnot into this? If I do, then I just check that and we'll bring all that data in. If I don't, I don't need to bring it in, great. Um, now, of course, we'll only show you the data that's in the template you've chosen, but we actually will copy all the data in here so that if you change the template, that extra data will just appear. Um, and then if you decide there's one thing on the tricky query that you actually didn't want to share, then you can use a template that doesn't have that piece of data and then it won't show. So uh, of course the data is only going to show based on which template you've chosen. Did that make sense? Are you nodding at me? Okay, great. <laughs> um, all right, so now if I create this, um, I get some uh, economic nexus is probably pretty big. So, oh, no, it's not. So now I've got this, it looks like any other bill sheet. Um, I can remove bills from it. I can take bills to something else. It's rolled up whatever comments I had. So some of them, oh, and there's a state link example. Um, I didn't put positions on them, but if I had, they'd roll it together. And now I've got the sheet, great. Uh, what can I do with this? Well, almost anything you can do with a normal bill sheet. So you can set up alerts for this. You can create widgets from this. So importantly, if you've got five different topics, you can now roll them together and make a map showing all five topics on one map. Um, and if you want, you can even put a category on all five topics and say which it is, and then when you roll it together, you'll see like where that bill came from. Um, you can also share this with other people. So if you've got someone you just want to be able to see some bills, but you, they don't need to know like what all the work was, what like the five different queries were, you can just put them together and say, here's the results, just look at this. You can create a stakeholder page from this. So again, you can inform people of several different topics in one place. Mostly you can make a map of all your different topics, though. but like that's the, that's the, that's the cool, exciting thing. Um, all right, so what you can't do with a roll-up, you cannot use it to roll up into another roll-up. So when you come here and you pick your fill sheets, other roll-ups will not show up in this choice. So you can't roll up roll-ups. Uh, and also the bills that are in here are only coming from the, the sheets that you're rolling up. So you cannot add bills to this sheet. So if I use the plus on a different bill sheet, roll up isn't an option to plus onto. You can't add bills directly to it. You've got to add bills to one of the sheets that go into it. So if you want to add a bill to this, you've got to add a bill to one of the things you've chosen to roll up, not to the roll up itself, because the roll up is always just the bills that you have rolled up. Um, did that make sense? <laughs> yep. Okay, so when you go to plus onto it, don't be surprised that roll up doesn't show up in your plus options. Um, so that is, that's it. Otherwise you can do about anything you wanna do that you would normally do with a bill sheet. Now, a couple details about how these roll ups work because it's actually more complicated than you think, which is why we haven't had them till now. Um, to bring it all together. So we've made some choices about how they'll work and these are them. The roll-up gets updated every evening when we're updating the bill sheets. So we'll update all the bill sheets first, then we'll roll up everything that needs to be rolled up uh, and then we'll send out alerts. So you can just get alerts on the roll-up and it'll have all the new bills and that will work just fine. But if you are changing one of the sheets that goes in the roll-up, so if I went to my barbecue sheet and I added a few bills, or I went to my barbecue sheet and I removed a few bills, or I added some positions, they will not roll up right away. So you can actually dink around with your sheets without affecting the roll up. 
it won't roll up until overnight. So if you just want to, you know, if you're in the barbecue sheet and you just for a minute want to see like what the bills were all the way back to, you know, 2018 and you pull them up, you know, that's not going to make them roll up. They're not going to roll up unless you leave it that way overnight. So you can, in fact, create a new sheet, play with your new sheet, make some changes before they will land in your roll up, which is actually, which I think is great because then your map isn't getting disturbed while you're working if you've put a map on a roll-up sheet. Um, now, if you make some changes and you do want them to show up in the roll-up right now, no problem. Just go open the roll-up and go to the roll-up tab and say save again. And that'll have it go and get all the bills again. So that causes it to re-roll up. <laughs> Is that a word? To re-roll up. Uh, so if you want to force it to update, go ahead and go to the roll-up tab, say save, and it'll go get the bills again. Um, but otherwise, it's not going to roll up until the night. OK, um, if you share this sheet, the roll up, with somebody who doesn't have permissions for the sheets below it, which is super possible if you're just trying to like inform a manager and you just want them to have the main sheet, then that means they won't be able to make any changes to the bill, to the sheets that are added. So you can't change a roll up when you're, well, when you're, when you're picking what to roll up, you only can pick things that you have permission to. Uh, so when you're going to make changes to the roll up, you can only change things that you have permission to. So just a heads up, if you share it with someone who doesn't have permission to those sheets, they won't be able to make changes, which is hopefully just as well. Um, all right, and then as I mentioned, you can't add a bill to a roll up. Um, either from a bill sheet or whatever. The only way to get a bill onto a roll up is for it to be in one of the sheets that are being rolled up. All right, that was a lot of technical stuff. Did that make sense or does anyone else have questions? I think that made a uh, good sense. I don't see anything in the chat. Um, I would add about just making sure, at, at least for me, it makes good sense of whether I work in the, in the baby subsheets, and then it has to go up, but remembering that whatever, it doesn't go the other way, right? Very good point, yes. So it only rolls up, it does not push down. So the child sheets, if you will, that's where you can do data entry. Um, if you change data in the roll up, you can, you can change the comment, but it's gonna get rolled up overnight and it will get obliterated when we re-roll up. So yes, just change the children. The roll up is just for you to see pretty much. Um, yes, good point. Okay. Um, are we interested in the future? Are you interested in the future, Patsy? Yes, I'm very excited about the future. <laughs> that is um, amazingly optimistic. We won't go into why. <laughs> Because it's best just not to think too far. The, All right. Bill, the Bill Track 50 future. I'm excited 50 about. 50. <laughs> oh, goodness. Um, okay. So, one thing is regulation sheet parity. So, our regulation sheets always lie behind our bill sheets because more people use bill sheets than regulation sheets. But we would like the regulation queries to work the same as the bill sheet queries. And it turns out, in this case, the future is today. We just pushed this functionality overnight. So as of today, the regulation sheets also have the expanded query capability, which is great. And I totally didn't expect. So that's great. Um, second, we are thinking of letting you color your maps with giving you a new option. So you can color code them by how much you support the bills on the map as opposed to how many bills are on the map. So for example, let's say on a, for one state you support five of the bills and you oppose two of them, then we could show it to be pretty green. And let's say in another state, you strongly oppose five bills and you don't support any of them, then it would be like an angry red. Uh, and so then we still need to kind of figure out what the rainbow is gonna be in between, but it'll just be like the average score from minus five to five of if you support the bills in that state. Um, so it won't be that there was three good ones makes it that much greener, then it, that's all still the same green of just the good green. 
Um, yeah, so then you could, if you go ahead and put positions in, you'll be able to see which states are like moving in the right direction and the wrong direction. So maybe if you have strong views about voting rights um, or voting integrity, then you can put your positions on all the bills and see which states are going in the direction that you want. So that is a uh, kind of an exciting thing that we're working on. Probably see that before the end of the year. Um, we're also working on potentially a have for legislators, but going back to the map, um, Patsy, you looked pretty happy. Like, that's fun, right? <laughs> I'm really excited because sometimes we um, work with folks who have a particular issue um, and maybe they're working in a handful of states and they want to see that spread further or they want to, you know, be able to look at their neighbors and say, you know, hey, there's a good example next door, you know, that they're doing well, let's borrow maybe from some of their legislative language or whatever. And that'll just make it really easy um, to focus in on that sort of thing or, um, you know, some of the social justice issues, see if there are particular regions of the country that are kind of leading the way in other areas that are lagging and stuff like that. Um, and I've had those conversations with a bunch of users. So um, I am really excited about that. I think that's awesome. Great. I am too. Because the number of bills can sometimes be meaningful, um, but sometimes it's a mix of good and bad bills. So that it's not that meaningful. Yeah. Uh, all right. So that's, yeah, that's, I'm, I'm looking forward to that too. All right. And then we have applied to Twitter uh, to have permission to use our API, which they have granted us. So we are on our way to creating a tab on the legislator page to show the legislator's most recent tweets. Um, is that helpful? I don't know. Um, but we're thinking of putting it up and seeing how it goes. Uh, Question is, are we gonna bring the links? Are we gonna bring the pictures that go with them? You know, we got a couple of things to work out because it's always oh, just a little harder than you think it's gonna be. Um, what we would be excited to do is let you search and say, I wanna search for this word in this legislator's Twitter feed and say, when's the last time they mentioned my university or something like that. Um, so we're also trying to, maybe that's our stretch goal, be, let you search on the Twitter tab. I don't know, we'll see how that goes. We'd be super interested in any feedback you have about how interested you are in that feature uh, and how you would use it to help us decide where we wanna spend our time. All right, and then we are currently able to help you with Canadian data, but not exactly track Canadian data. So our partnership with Mob Advocacy, um, they will track the data for you, but right now, it's going to be in a Google Doc and not inside Bill Track 50. However, I'm excited to say that I've got my first table full of Canadian bill data, um, and it does look like we'll be able to make it work. Um, but this is not a this year project. <laughs> this is a long term project. So uh, we're completely interested in like how much you're interested in that. Should we prioritize that? Should we just work on it when we have a chance? Um, but all of the provinces do have their bills posted. We've, we've surveyed all of them. They will all work. And the federal Canadian data works. So it's possible and we're started. So let us know how important you think that is. And if you want it right away, again, we can do it by hand for you. Um, it just won't be inside Bill Track 50. So it will be updated every day. Um, but we can help you research and um, follow Canadian data if you want. And then we're also considering allowing um, alerts more often. Again, not sure we're gonna do this. This is, this is something that we are currently debating. Would be interested in if that's useful to you to get like a, an afternoon alert in addition to a morning alert, that would be optional. Like you could say, I want. And then would you be interested in less frequent alerts? Would you like to be able to get just an email once a week? instead of every day. Um, so we're looking at giving you some options for how often you get alerts instead of just the one size fits all, you get it every morning, like it or not. Um, so very interested in feedback on, on that. Uh, all right. Anything that you know we're working about that I forgot to put on the slide? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I'm, 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 I'm really excited about sort of more user-directed frequency because 
um, depending on, you know, what the particular user is up to and their goals. Sometimes they just want it once a week. Um, and then sometimes uh, multiple times a day is appropriate, depending on what they're up to. Um, so uh, the time of year. Uh, exactly. Like this is all, <laughs> you know, I don't, I don't need multiple in August usually. <laughs> um, so having that flexibility uh, it would probably be pretty exciting for a bunch of people. So, but no, um, I think that is, that is a reflection of an exciting future. Yeah. Yeah. I'll be some fun little things. Um, all right. So Thank you very much for coming. Um, do you have any questions? Do you have any queries you want to work on? Uh, so feel free to chat us if you've got anything that you would like us to tackle right now while we're together. And uh, Patsy and I can chat idly in the meantime. My <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, so. Oh, <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Uh, all right, more Darlene's, the more the better, the more the merrier, as they say. Um, all right, so looks like we don't have any query questions or anything about this functionality. Of course, once you get in there, if you can't figure it out, you'll get the presentation and that might help, help, but we'll also reach out to you towards the end of the year. Make sure you're doing okay. See if you have any questions, if there's anything we can do. Um, and we'll do our housekeeping webinars as well. So we've got your back. Um, this was just to give you a heads up about all the new functionality that you might want to play with in the summer while we're oh, Thanks, Sabina. <laughs> she said, you guys rock. <laughs> Aww, I feel the same way about her. Um, yeah. <laughs> all right. Sweet. Uh, okay, everybody. Well, thank you very much for coming. Hopefully this was interesting and exciting. And we will catch you all on the flip side. Bye. Bye.